Hey, Pin Dude here. Welcome back to My Vintage Pinball. In this episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Not so much pinball related, a little more on the video arcade and retro gaming side of the hobby. Uh, if you're like a lot of us pinball people, we started uh, by collecting coin-operated video games. I started collecting coin-operated video games in the early 2000s, uh, built a couple main machines as well. Uh, before I started to replace all those machines with pinball machines. Uh, so it's been a while since I played around with emulation and retro gaming, but the Raspberry Pi has been real popular for a few years now, and I figured we'd give it a shot. So what we're going to do today is build a retro Pi setup using the Raspberry Pi 3. This is a very inexpensive and easy way to get your retro gaming emulators and MAME up and running on your television. Uh, I haven't done this yet. This build is going to be new to me, so we're going to be doing this for the first time together. But I've done a bunch of research and made a bunch of notes and bought all the parts and pieces I need to put this retro Pi Raspberry Pi 3 together. And that's what we're going to do right now, so let's get started. All right, so first let's cover all the parts we're gonna need for this Raspberry Pi 3 Retro Pi uh, build. Now I got all these parts off of Amazon and they all came in the same box. So here's what we're gonna need. First, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi. Now this is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. This is $35 on Amazon. You're also going to need a case. Now the case is completely up to you. I happen to get a case that had a built-in fan and it is made by this company here which I'm not even going to try to pronounce but uh, I'll put it on the screen and all the links to these will be in the description. So this case also comes with a power supply and on the power supply you're going to want to get one that has an inline switch. Your other option is to buy a case that has a power switch built into it uh, but either way, you're going to want to switch because uh, if you don't get one with a switch, then you'll have to unplug and plug in the power supply. And that could break or wear out the, uh, the port on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so these range, uh, you can get a case with a power supply range in anywhere from $10 to $15. This case was $12. You're also going to need an HDMI cable. Uh, I happen to have a spare H HDMI cable laying around, so I didn't need to buy one. Uh, you're going to need an, a micro SD card. Uh, this is a ScanDisk Ultra. I went with a 32 gig. You don't particularly need one as big as a 32. It really depends on how many systems and how many ROMs you're going to have. Um, I could have got by just fine with a 16 gig, uh, but it was only a couple dollars more. For a 32 gig, I got this uh, 32 gig micro SD card for $12 on Amazon. You're also going to need a, a controller. And this was the controller that is most recommended. It is made by Buffalo, and it is called the Classic USB Gamepad. It is basically a uh, copy of the Super NES, the Super Nintendo controller. Uh, and this is the one that everybody recommends. And they were $11 and change on Amazon. Uh, so I bought two of those controllers. So I got all this stuff except the HDMI cable, which I already had. Uh, but all these other parts, including both controllers, uh, was under or just around $70. So this build is going to cost us right around $70, which is quite the bargain uh, for everything that this is going to be able to do. So now that we have all the parts, let's get started. All right, so our first step is going to be to install the Raspberry Pi 3 circuit board into the case. So, first, <clears throat> we're going to unbox the case here and see what's inside. So, we got a fan. We got the uh, cord for the power supply that has the power on off switch, the plug for the power supply. We have some heat sinks that are going to be stuck on to the circuit, uh, to the chips on the Raspberry Pi 3. We have the actual case, and we have the instruction manual for the case. So let's uh, open up the instruction manual and start with step number one. So 
So here is the case. Uh, it looks like it's got some clear, clear uh, maybe acrylic pieces or something on it because they have a protective layer on them. And we're going to need a little uh, screwdriver. And we're going to disassemble it. All right, so we have a, uh, oh boy, it's actually comes in a bunch of different pieces. This doesn't look like fun. <clears throat> all right, so we'll leave them all together. And the first step is showing this piece. And it says to remove the protective covering, which is probably not going to be fun. All right, now we need to unbox the Raspberry Pi 3. Model B. So let's see what we got in here. We got the instruction manual. And then we have the unit. And here it is. If you've never seen a Raspberry Pi, this is uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Uh, there's not much to it. We got uh, four USB ports. We have an Ethernet port. Uh, some kind of power port, uh, HDMI port, the uh, micro USB port, and then on the bottom here, this is where the uh, micro SD card slot is. And that's it. Not really too much to it. So they tell us where these heat sinks go. So let's dump these out onto the table here. So there's three little heat sinks that just have a double stick adhesive on the back. So two of them are the same. So the first one, if we follow the picture here, goes on the underside of the board. So that's this chip here. Stick that on there and put it back into the case. All right, now we got the other two heat sinks. Obviously, the smaller one goes on the small chip. And the bigger one goes on the bigger chip on the top side of the board. All right, we've got the heat sinks on. Now we'll put the rest of the case together. All right, now we got to deal with the top and putting the fan in and there's a little subsection in the manual for putting the fan in so we'll open up the fan and again we got to peel the protective film off All right, I just hook the case up to the fan. They give you a little diagram of where the wires go. And then back to the instructions for putting the lid on. And there we go. We got our Raspberry Pi with the case fan and all set up in the case. All the ports are easy to get to and this slot in the bottom is for the micro SD card. All right, so now we need to go up to the uh, up to my PC and we need to play with some files and with the micro SD card and get this loaded with RetroPie. All right, I've come upstairs to my PC and I'm using the uh, RetroPie setup wiki to do this i also took my micro sd card and put it in an sd reader because uh, we need to burn the retro pi image file onto this micro sd card 
All right, so we're on the RetroPie wiki. Uh, we need to download the RetroPie image that we're gonna need to burn onto this micro SD card. Uh, so first choose your system. We're using a Raspberry Pi, so I'll click on that. And then we scroll down to where we're gonna download the image. That'll take us to another link. And then there's two downloads. One if you're using a Raspberry Pi 1, and another if you're using a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, we're using a Raspberry Pi 3, so we're going to be downloading this image file on the uh, right here. And now that we got that file downloaded, we need to unzip it. So uh, it is recommended to use, uh, at least on this, uh, 7 zip. Uh, which is right here. So 7-Zip to unzip it. Uh, I don't think it matters. I downloaded 7-Zip. I had a different zip file, uh, but I, you know, so I used this one. I downloaded 7-Zip and that uh, took the zip file, which was I think a GZ file and made it, unzipped it, and now it is an IMG file. The IMG file is what we need to burn onto the micro SD card. And to do that, I used a program called Win32 Disk Imager. I downloaded that, and it ended up on my desktop here. And we're going to use that right now to burn that file onto the micro SD card. So for the third time, let's open up Win32 and find that image on our computer. All right, so we have that image up. This is the RetroPie IMG is the uh, file extension name because it's an image that we're going to burn to that micro SD. And the device comes up as D, which is our micro SD. And we want to write it. And yes, we want to continue. So we'll let this go. Uh, it's going to take a while to get this image burned to the micro SD. Uh, so we will come back. All right, so it completed. It says complete 1.0, write successful. So we're going to close Win32. And we're just going to confirm that wrote and it did so we should be good we got the uh, retro pi image burned to the micro SD card so let's move on all right so we have our micro SD we're going to take this back down to the shop and get it loaded onto the Raspberry Pi uh, one other thing you're going to need is a way to get your ROMs from your PC onto the Raspberry Pi. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. Uh, the easiest, it seems for me, is to use a USB stick to transfer the files. Um, I am using an 8 gig stick here. Uh, but before we go downstairs, we need to format this. And it says to format it to either FAT32 or NTFS. So let's put this into my PC here. And we're going to format this FAT32. All right, so we got our USB stick formatted to FAT32. And now I'm back on the uh, RetroPie Wiki page and under the USB tab for loading ROMs. It tells us we need to create a file, uh, create a folder on the USB stick and call it RetroPie. So we're going to go into our USB stick, uh, new folder, and name it Retro Pi. Close that, make sure I spelled Retro Pi correctly. And that's all we need to do up here. So let's take all this stuff back down to the workshop and finish up the install. All right, we're back out in the workshop. I got my 
a micro SD card with the file on it. I have my USB stick, which is formatted and has the retro Pi folder on it. We have the power supply. We have the retro Pi already in the case. We have our HDMI cable. And to start, we need one of the uh, USB game pads. So to start, we're gonna put the USB cable. Uh, to start, we're gonna put the HDMI cable onto the television. And then we're going to open up the power supply. And we want to take the micro SD card and put it in the card slot. So we have the micro SD card in the Raspberry Pi before we boot it up. We want to open up our USB controller. All right, we want to plug this controller into the upper uh, left USB, which should be USB port number one. Uh, when we get to the point where we put our player two controller in, we'll put it in the lower left USB port, which will be uh, port number two. Uh, so let's get our HDMI cable plugged in. And let's get the TV set up to that input. So we have HDMI hooked up, the player one USB controller, the micro SD card is in the card slot, and we're gonna put the power connector on. And we have We have an image on the screen. It says it's rebooting. Retro Pi. And it sh what it should be doing is, uh, since we have the micro SD in there with the IMG file on it, it should be loading that uh, up right now. And it is. So this may take a while, uh, we'll come back once it's all done and set up. Alright, so it's booted up to the welcome screen, gamepad detected, hold a button on your device to configure it, so we'll hold a button down, it recognizes the gamepad, D-pad up, press down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder. Now it says left trigger, right trigger. We don't have those, so we're just going to hold a button down. We don't have a right trigger. We don't have a left thumb. We don't have a right thumb. We don't have analog. All right, so now we're in uh, configuration. And we're not going to mess too much around with that right now. And let's see. Menu is start. Oops. B for back. All right. So we need uh, right now. There's no uh, there's no emulation programs in here. So we got our USB stick that we formatted FAT32. I put a folder on there that is called Retro Pi. And now we're going to stick this into a USB slot. And we're watching a blinking light on the circuit board. All right, so the blinking on the circuit board has stopped. So now they say you can remove the USB stick. And we're going to take this upstairs and see if there's anything on it. All right, so now we're upstairs on the PC. I plugged the USB stick into my PC. And here it is right here. We'll open that up. Here's the retro Pi folder that we put on here that was empty. And now if we open that, and now we have files with BIOS, config, and ROMs. If we open the ROMs folder, here's all the different emulators that are already loaded onto the retro Pi. 
and these are the folders where we're going to put the ROMs that we have for each system that we want to use. We're going to put those ROMs, copy them from our PC, and drop them into the appropriate folder here on the USB stick. So now that we have our ROM files on our USB stick here, it says to plug it into the unit. And we should have a green blinking light on the unit, and we do. And we have to wait for that to stop blinking, which will probably be a while as it's transferring those ROM files. So we'll come back when that's done. All right, the green light has stopped doing anything, so we're going to take the USB stick out. And we're going to reboot the unit. All right, and now we're booted back up, and as you can see, we now have all the emulators that we uh, populated with ROMs. So we have Atari 2600, uh, MAME, Sega Master System, Sega Mega Drive, which is Genesis, uh, the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, and Super Nintendo. So let's see if we can figure out how to work this. It says hit select is A, so we're going to select uh, Atari 2600, and uh, we'll load a game. And let's see if we can get it to play. Be nice to turn the sound on. And I got to figure out the buttons. There we go. Let's get the volume up a little bit. I keep forgetting what button to press. It's the B button. Alright, so that's working. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. Turn the light off. Alright, so I, I figured it out. It was uh, my hotkey. Uh, and and uh, my hotkey, which was this left shoulder and start to exit out. Actually, I had to look that up. Oh, so back is B. And let's try um, let's try a master system game. All right, we got master system up. I'll hit start. We got punch and jump. Oh boy. All right, well, you get the idea. So, uh, hot key and start to exit the system. And then B for back. All right, so for, se <clears throat> for setting up MAME, you're going to need a uh, USB keyboard. I just st stole this from my PC upstairs. Once we get it set up, we won't need it anymore. Uh, so, we're going to load a game. And once we're in the game, we're going to hit the tab key and go to input general. And now we can set all the uh, controls for MAME so that we don't need the keyboard anymore. Uh, so uh, in the menu, there'll be ones that say UI. That's the user interface. Uh, you'll want to make sure they're set up for the controller. Uh, and then you want to set up all your uh, player one buttons uh, and your controller all in this menu. And then once you have that set up, to use the controller, you won't need the keyboard anymore. The keyboard's only to set things up. So we can exit out of that, and we got a main game up. I set the coin to select, which credits up the game, and then start to start the game. And now we are playing Burger Time. All right, so the last thing we have to do is get the uh, Player 2 controller working. Um... So let me unplug my keyboard here. We don't need that right now. Let's just drop my phone. All right, so again, we got the Player One controller in the upper left USB slot. I used my label maker and I labeled the back of the controller Player One. So I will make another label for Player Two. Got 
got my label here. We'll just trim it up a little bit. Player two. And our last unboxing of the project is to get this uh, con second controller out of here. And we'll start by putting my label for player two here so we don't get confused since the controllers are identical. I put my label on there. We're going to plug this into the bottom left USB slot. And we're going to go into the menu, uh, configure input. Two game pads detected. Hold a button on your device to configure it. So we're going to take the player two controller. We're going to hold a button down. And it says uh, game pad two now. So it looks like we're doing the right thing. So we'll do D pad up, D pad down, D pad left, right, start, select. A, B, X, Y. All right, so there's one last thing to set up. In the uh, menu here, there is the top line there. It's called Scraper. And what the Scraper is, is it will go online and pull all the box art and game descriptions for the ROMs that you have in the various systems. And it works really great. So the first thing you need to do is go into the RetroPie menu by hitting uh, A at the RetroPie configuration. And you need to set up your Wi-Fi by selecting Wi-Fi. And then it'll bring you into a uh, the window here and the top line is connect Wi-Fi. Connect to Wi-Fi. That's where uh, w once you hit A there, you'll put your, uh, your username and password for your Wi-Fi network in there. Uh, you can disconnect this Wi-Fi after you run the scraper program if you don't want to keep your Raspberry Pi online, as I do not. So after you set that up, you exit out of that, exit out of this screen, and then uh, hit the start for the main menu, and then select the, the scraper. And then you just leave this set up the way it is on the screen, scrape from... Uh, you can turn that on and scrape now. And uh, this takes, if you have a lot of ROMs like I do, this will take many hours. Uh, so I did it at night and I just let it run while I went to sleep. And then when I came back and you go into a system, now, as you see, all the ROMs have uh, art and game descriptions. So this is, I'm on Super Nintendo right now. And you can see everything looks really neat. Uh, let's try uh, Sega Master System. So you have all the box art, which is really neat. Game description, when the game came out. Let's go to, oops, I loaded a game instead of backing out of the menu. And then in MAME, you have same thing. You have art for uh, all the ROMs. The year it came out, like here's Asteroids, came out July 1st, 1979. It's a shooter, it's a two player game. So all that info is on the screen, so you kind of know what the game is be before you load it if you're not familiar with the game. Here's Bagman. Uh, January 1st, 1982. It's a platform game, two-player. You know, so all that info is in here. It's really, it's really neat. Uh, it was just a one-click run the scraper program, and now, you know, you have all this info on your games. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, the system is set up. Uh, I'm really happy with the setup. Uh, they'll, they'll take some minor tweaking. You know, you'll have some ROMs that you know, maybe won't work and you'll have to, you know, delete those and maybe add some new ROMs. You'll have to play around with it, your ROM stuff. But on the uh, the hardware and the software side on the RetroPie, everything's set up, everything works. It did not take long. It did not cost a lot of money and it's a really fun project to do. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in doing this, I hope this video has helped you. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. I have moved this uh, in the house into my entertainment system. So now anybody in the house 
that wants to play some retro gaming. Uh, the menu system on RetroPie is really easy to understand. So uh, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any comments or feedback, please leave it down below. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit subscribe. A lot more pinball videos coming up in the weeks to come. And that'll do it. This is Pin Dude from My Vintage Pinball. Thanks for watching. See ya.